The first great map to fill in the knowledge void in Pacific geography was Captain James Cook's huge general chart from his atlas published in London in 1784. Most people know Cook's name, but what they don't usually realize is how much of the Pacific was first charted by this English navigator during his three famous 18th century expeditions. In 1768, the Royal Society and the British Admiralty proposed a scientific expedition to the South Pacific to observe the passage of Venus before the sun and to find the Terra Australis, an unknown continent believed to exist in the Southern Hemisphere. Besides the working crew, Cook was accompanied by a number of scientists recommended by the Society, including Joseph Banks and Daniel Solander, botanists, Sidney Parkinson and Alexander Bouchon, artists, and Charles Green, who was responsible for the actual observation of the planet Venus. The destination of this scientific expedition was Tahiti. Cook and his crew set sail from Plymouth in August of 1768. On January 12, 1769, they reached the southern tip of South America and stopped long enough for Banks to gather local specimens. On April 13, 1769, after eight months of sailing, they finally reached their first main destination, Tahiti. After observations had been recorded, Cook spent much of his time circumnavigating the islands, and after six weeks in what he referred to as the Garden of Eden, the endeavor set sail. Leaving the island of Tahiti, Cook sailed northward and visited Huahini, Raiatea, and the other islands in the chain. With his first mission accomplished, he turned southward to investigate the possibility of finding the great southern landmass, the Terra Australis. On October 7th, he spotted the east coast of New Zealand, first discovered by Tasman some 126 years before, but not seen since by Europeans. From October to April, Cook sailed around New Zealand, becoming the first explorer to chart the 2,000 miles of coastline, proving that it consisted of two main islands and was not part of the Australian landmass, as had been previously thought until that time. As they headed toward Tasmania Island in the south, strong gales and winds blew the ship off course, and on April 21st, they spotted the coast of Australia and spent one full week of traveling up the coast before anchoring at Botany Bay. After a near tragedy in Australia's coral reef that almost destroyed the endeavor, Cook headed southward and investigated every coastal feature he could. Finally, he headed north again, battled the Great Barrier Reef, and proved that a passage did indeed exist between Australia and New Guinea. On October 10th, Cook finally reached Batavia, modern Jakarta, where he dispatched his journals, maps, and charts to the Admiralty in London via the Dutch ship Cronenberg. After repairs to his ship, Cook set sail for England. During the 10-week trip between Batavia and the Cape of Good Hope, his whole crew became seriously ill from diseases picked up in their last port. In that short voyage from the Indies to Africa, 32 members of Cook's crew died, including Green, the astronomer, and Parkinson, the artist. Finally, on July 12, 1771, the Endeavour reached England after a trip that had lasted two years and 11 months. After the first voyage, the Admiralty praised Cook and promoted him commander of the ship Scorpion, a temporary appointment until they had finalized their plans for yet another voyage to the South Seas with Cook as commander of the new project. The Admiralty had been so pleased with his first accomplishments that they gave him no specific instructions for the second voyage. However, continuing his search for the great unknown southern continent was of high priority. For this journey, two ships were provided, the Resolution and the Adventurer. After all preparations were completed, the ships sailed from Plymouth on July 13, 1772. They reached Cape Town on October 30th, where they held up for supplies. Cook's first endeavor was to try to locate Cape Circumcision, located 1,700 miles south of Cape Town, which had been theorized as part of the Great Southern Continent. After January 17th, he crossed the Antarctic Circle, the first time for any vessel. 
but packed ice prevented him from going further. He satisfied himself that there was no southern continent in this part of the South Atlantic. After continuing to unsuccessfully look for Kerguelen's island, they sailed for Tahiti. September found the group visiting what was named the Cook Islands before moving on to Tonga by October. After leaving Tonga on October 8th, they sailed westward. They made their way on to Queen Charlotte Sound before making another attempt to find the southern continent. On December 21st, they crossed the Antarctic Circle, but turned north on January 30th to thaw and rest. Then for the third time, Cook ordered his ship southward, reaching his furthest point south, 71 degrees south latitude, 106 degrees longitude west. Very few ships have penetrated that far south even to this day. They set sail northward to try to locate Easter Island, previously discovered by Captain Edward Davis in 1687, but found no safe harbor when reached. They then set sail to find the Marquesas, previously discovered some 100 years before by the Spanish. On April 7th, they sailed into Vaitahu Bay in the Marquesas, then on to Tahiti by April 22nd. From there, they went to Huahini, Raiatea, and on to the Tongan Islands, where they spent some three months and then headed westward toward home, passing through and naming the New Hebrides. On September 5th, they discovered New Caledonia, and after turning south and spending three weeks in New Zealand refurbishing the resolution, they set sail for Cape Horn. By late December, they entered the Atlantic Ocean, penetrated deep into the South Atlantic, but still found no southern continent. They touched Cape Town on March 21st, and by July 30th, 1775, after a voyage of three years and 18 days, they were back in England.